I think it's time to see some cats Get everybody in their stuff together Okay, three, two, one, let's cast There's Noe She's in the tower Under, well Under the tower She's in the dungeon That's where, that's where she likes to hang out Whenever she's conducting her alchemy experiments, you know, because lions and it's like royalty, medieval, you know, they are, lions are wear on a lot of like medieval coat of arms. So it just makes sense. You know, that's like the tower. Uh, she's like really into alchemy. Alchemy. That sounds like a guy's name. Oh, oh, you know Al? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He drives a truck for the hardware store. Good guy. Al Chemi. Tiger. Twitchy tiger. Sleepy tiger. I don't want to wake her up. I don't want to be a jerk. Because that would be a jerk thing to do. Malik? Oh, hi. Hey, pretty girl. She's kind of been hanging around in this little corner the uh, last couple of days. The Malika corner. The little ear tufts. Okay, sorry. Sorry. I think you, I don't know if she yawned, which I missed because I was focusing on her ear tufts. Look at those things. Those are cool. You know, like when she kind of goes through like her, her rebellious phase, you know, she's got. She'll dye one like blue and then the other one like neon orange. You know, she'll have an earring. Like no one understands me. <laughs> but she's just, she only dyes the ear tops, that's it. All right. Hello all you big cat lovers out there, it's me Derek again. Welcome to another super duper fantastic episode of the Walk Around the Compound webcast. Hi, hello, how are you? We're still warm. It's still, it's not like crazy hot, but it's, it's enough. We have been getting a little bit of rain lately. So then, uh, you know, we got stuff like that. Now, like two groups of two, Ruby two shrooms. <laughs> Ruby two two shrooms. Cause you get it, the two. I had to make it work. Because of course people would be like, I uh, get more than two. And I'm like, I can count. <laughs> that reminds me of uh, whenever, you know, when pe people would say things like, hey, like, no poop, Sherlock. But they might not say poop. They would say like a different word. And there's also, there's like a reply you could say, I guess. Where it's like, hey, no fecal matter, Sherlock. And then the reply could be like, keep digging, Watson. Which I never really quite understood. It's like, are they digging for poop? What's the what is the context of that? Are they are they on a poop expedition? 
And then is Watson, why is Watson only in the hole? Watson is digging, can't, and they're, and like, is this part of like a case? Are they hoping to like solve a mystery, a murder? But then they like, that. we know that the killer buried their poops over here. We have, if we, once we find them, we'll be able to bust this case wide open. And you know, Sherlock, he's like, get in there. Watson's like, do I have to? He's like, how many times do I tell you? Yes, you are the one that has to do these types of things. I don't. I'm a world-class detective. So that's one of those kind of things where it's like, I, and I would say it, like, as a, I remember, like, I, someone would say the no poop, sh and I would say, keep digging, Watson, and then sometimes, like, adults would hear that, and they'd be like, ah, ha, ha, that's funny. Still, to this day, I don't quite get it. <laughs> I don't really, you know? I don't know. Somebody explain it to me in the comment section. It might be something, like, really silly, because there's, like, a lot of times, uh, like, I'll hear a joke, and the, the explanation is super simple, but it just completely whooshes. I, it's a whoosh. There's a whoosh over the head kind of thing. Whoop. Whoa. Ruby two shrooms. Ruby two shrooms. There's also, uh, you know, if like if you're if you do a clumsy thing, this kind of goes back to like 90s. A lot of 90s references. But if you do something clumsily, you spill a glass, you know, uh, uh, you spill a drink or something like that. And then someone might say, hey, smooth move, x lax," Which I get that. I get that because, you know, x lax it, it facilitates uh, smooth movements. Hi, Ren. Melissa says hi, by the way. Melissa says hi. <laughs> she does. Melissa says hi. Smooth move, x lax And there was one time when I'm still trying to find my comedic chops. I'm still trying to find my way. I must have been probably like 12 or 13 or something like that. Um, and I didn't quite have the reference down. Or like the, the implied meaning or the under... Uh, like, like, well, this is why you're saying the things you're saying in the order that you're saying them. I didn't quite get that. I was just basically just repeating the like variants of the words that I had heard thinking that that hey, like that's how you do jokes. That's how you do comedy. So we were I think that it was up at my grandparents' house. And cuz I just I I associate my brother and then my aunt, one of my aunts, my aunt Teresa. Uh, with it. Hold on. Ah, hold on. There's something. What's in there? There is. Is there a bug? I think there's a bug in my shoe. Because <laughs> I think it was almost like we were we were at the the table in the kitchen. We were playing cards, like at my grandparents' house, and like my brother, like he, I think he like just dropped. Like a couple of cards, or like he didn't, like something got shuffled kind of clumsily. Wasn't like, it wasn't really like that big of a deal. But I seized it. I seized the opportunity. Aha! I'm the one that's usually getting the brunt of like clumsy jokes or being, you know, made fun of. This is my opportunity to point a finger where so many have been pointing at me. So I prepared my delivery in front of everyone and I very resolutely said nice going x lax <laughs> and everyone started laughing and I'm like yeah yeah <laughs> and I, I of course I didn't realize it at the time but they were laughing they were laughing at the poor delivery. 
at the poorly delivered, <laughs> like not, you, you're not getting the spirit of intent that it like fuels that reference. So you botched it and you did it. So you did, you botched it hilariously. That's yeah. But I didn't, I thought that, I thought that I had executed it flawlessly. And that's why they were laughing. <laughs> nice going, x -lax. So then, then, that became, I remember for a few years, like, that became a reference. Where, <laughs> if someone, like, did, like, a thing, yeah, I'd be like, hey, nice going. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. <laughs> it still spread joy. Maybe not in the way that I had originally intended it to, but joy nonetheless. And isn't that what jokes are all about? You can see we uh, we put some fence panels in a in a rectangular fashion on the corner of the enclosure here to uh, you know act as a uh, as a stair stepping holding area for Mr. Peaser Pants. Let's go see him. Hi, hi, Miss Peaser. Hi, Mr. Peaser Pants. Oh, big stretch. Big stretch. Hello. Ooh. Hi. Hi, big guy. Ooh. Hello. Hello. How are you? How are you? So yeah, I got him moved. He uh, he was getting a little he was getting a little bit too restless, and he was he was bending bars and uh, like pacing and like making all sorts of racket and stuff like that. Uh, oftentimes in the middle of the night. And he would like make this like a mischievous commotion. And then Heidi or whoever was kind of staying would, would go in and be like, Peaser, what are you doing? And then he'd be like, Oof. he's like, what's up? And then he would then like lay down and then start like, hey, you don't mind? Can you just hang out with me while I go to sleep? And people were like, Peaser. <laughs> so what? So yeah, he was, uh, but it was getting to the point where it's like, yeah, we were starting to like really have concerns about the structural integrity of the, of some of like the holding area apparatuses that uh, we had put them in. So then, you know, on um, recommendation from uh, multiple, multiple different vets within his care team, uh, they were like, yeah, like it's probably time to, you know, at least get him like the next step, the next step along the the recovery kind of thing so let's let's get them let's get them over into the into the enclosure but we still have to you know he's still he's still healing he's still healing and he still has a ways to go you know so yeah but yeah, this is this is an important step. It's a good step, and this is kind of an interesting thing too. It's an interesting time. I was talking to Heidi about it last night because we actually were cleaning up the sunroom. Um, we like Raven passed away, and then like literally like either that day or the next day, it, like Peaser was in the sunroom. So we went from like you know cats needing intense care one right after the other, and. Since moving Peaser out, and we, we cleaned up the sunroom, and now it's just... Like, we still have it set up to where if he needs to come back, which that could be a possibility. Like, if he needs to come back, um, then it's it's ready. But we were, we were talking about that. 
because like Heidi was saying about how she wasn't she wasn't really able to you know like kind of really process or think you know or take the time to to you know like absorb Raven's passing um, as much as she would have wanted to just because I had to go like right into taking care of Peaser. So like this move right here, him him coming over here has actually given her the opportunity to kind of to to reflect a bit more. It's been interesting. Ruby. Poor thing. Poor thing. Oh boy. Uh oh, you got locked out. Yeah, yeah you did. Yeah, she was asleep, and then all of a sudden, bamboozled. Well, maybe if you didn't pee on your bed so much, nope. you wouldn't have to get locked out <laughs> as often as you do. <laughs> yeah, and she's like, "Don't you tell me how to live my life? <laughs> I will pee on my bed as much as I want to." And he's like, well, that's fine. That's your choice. You can do that. But just understand that this is a part of that lifestyle. Getting locked out so that they can go ahead and, like, you know, change out your mattress, change out your sheets. That comes with that. Hi, <laughs> big guy. Hi, big guy. There's a big guy. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Avoid. There we go. Those kids. And those kids. And then there we go. There we go. Webcast done. <laughs> All right. Thank you for watching this episode of the Walker on the Compound webcast. Hashtag Dorbist Award in the comment section below. Like and subscribe for all of your big cat goodness. And if you want to learn more about the facility around me, you can always visit the website carerescuetexas.com for more information. You keep them tigers fed. Big shout out to the extra fancy patrons. I see you. You are so fancy. And thank you so much for your continued support. And we'll see you next time. All right. Bye-bye.